Uh, we're talking to Lois, and who's to your right? To my right is Kim Mullins, and she teaches fifth grade very well at our school. Fifth grade? Mm -hmm. The whole fifth grade. The whole fifth grade. All right, is that, is that, yeah, move up to that microphone, will you? All right. Go, say it again. The whole fifth grade. The whole fifth grade. There you go. That sounds much better. And uh, I'm sorry, is Ms. Mullins? Mullin. Mullin, and first name again? Kim. Kim, and what, uh, where are you from, by the way? I'm from Hammond. From Hammond? Where'd you go to grade school? North Carolina. You went to there's a there's a grade school in Hammond called North Carolina Grade School. Yeah. No, no I went. I'm from Hickory, North Carolina, and uh, I went to a parochial school when I was growing up. What, what kind? Uh, Lutheran. Lutheran school. Mm -hmm. So you've got some uh, background in this. I do. So you grew up Lutheran. Right. And you teach in a Lutheran school here in behind Jewel in Munster. Right. But My second time around. Your second time around. What yeah. happened? Well, the first time I was there for five years and then left and uh, no Don happened to be in, in insurance and then came back but uh, you know I had subbed in other educational areas in the Hammond area and Munster and um, when the opportunity arose I jumped at it because of the quality of education that we have and because of um, the staff and the, it's like a family oriented um, building with the staff and parents and uh, everybody works really well together as far as trying to promote uh, the Christian faith and entwine it into the children and uh, help them to grow and mature in a way that would be productive to society. Kim and Lois are with St. Paul Lutherans in Munster. Now, uh, you've where, or just tell me where'd you sub? But like Munster High or in the elementary well, schools? And element in the elementary schools. And you also mm -hmm. subbed in Hammond, mm -hmm. or also. So in that time you were subbing, you got to see a lot of public schools. I did around here, mm -hmm. and you've also been in uh, St. Paul. So what do you, what is the when you walk into one of the, a, a building like St. Paul's Lutheran or quite frankly a lot of the Catholic schools? What is uh uh, w what's the feel? What is the, how is it different? Well, you know, there's a lot of great schools out there, uh, public as well. But I guess when you come into our f facility, it is, um, it's a lot of warmth there. And um, the, the, just the ambience of the whole, the whole building, the people, uh, the kids, it, it's just a totally different atmosphere. And you know, I would have to attribute that to as part of the Christian faith and trying to do, what, like you would say, what would Jesus do? And we instill that in the, in the kids. I just have to say also great. that we're very excited at St. Paul's this year because uh, we're celebrating our 125th year of having St. Paul's Lutheran School. So when Mr. Siren was talking about uh, the Hammond facility, um, now we've been in Munster also, and the compilation of years is 125. So that shows how steadfast we are with uh, promoting Christian education and um, making sure that it lasts uh, for boys and girls. Two one nine eight four five eleven hundred. Anybody go to like St. Paul's back in the day? I'd love to hear from you. So when when did they close the first one down? Uh, that's a good question. We uh, uh, built the new church in, was it the early 80s? 85, 89? Yes. Early 80s, because I used to live over there. Well, well, I remember building it. Do you yeah. know on, on Columbia Late Avenue, 70s. the uh, um, Red Cross office on, on Columbia and Ridgeway in Munster? Columbia. And Fairway? Columbia and Ridgeway? Columbia and Fairway. The yeah, Red Cross facility. Yeah, yeah, the Salvation Army. Yeah, Salvation I'm sorry. Yeah. But that used to be our chapel. See, uh, many, many years ago, our church was on Clinton Street in Hammond, and they owned that property also where that building is, and that was our chapel. Uh, back in the 60s, that was South County, Jimmy. So that was the South County residence over, over there, believe it or not. Where, not even at, Ridge Road. Columbia? Yeah. Columbia that, and Fairway? you got to understand, most of our parishioners back in, in, in the 50s and 60s were from the Hammond, uh, uh, Lansing, Calumet City area. And... Then people started to migrate a little more south to Munster, to Highland, to Dyer. Well, that facility, uh, w which is the, the, what you said, uh, we own that as the chapel. 
and they would have services there for the South County residents that want to come all the way to downtown Hammond. Two and nine eight four. That's just a block north of Ridge Road. That was considered back then South County. <laughs> come on. Hey, you're on the air. What's up? I just have to say to Steve, kudos to you for bringing this type of programming to the airways there. I, it's so badly needed, and Thanks, I think Joe. it's one of the first in the area that has done this. And to you people there from St. Paul's Lutheran School there, I think one of you said it all in a nutshell. Family orientated with God being the central focus, and the outcome is productive citizens. Uh, and you won't hear this type of uh, atmosphere or uh, policy said anywhere in a public school. That's the reason some of these people are going to be successful. Hey, thanks, Again, thanks, thanks a lot, Joe. Much. Sure, yeah. Thank you. I want someone that went to the old St. Paul's Lutheran School because I'm not altogether sure Stephen Searing isn't making this up. All right? So somebody has to call in. Otherwise, you know, I have thought he was kind of making stuff up before, but this one I've never – I've been – my dad used to play softball at uh, that location there, right behind the Civic Center in the early 70s. And yeah, I don't the softball re- fields were there. And the school was there, too? Here's what you got to do. Ask somebody that remembers the fire at Hammond High School in 1968, I think it was, and ask the band people, the band director, where they placed all their musical instruments after that fire. There was Our a big school. fire at Saint at Hammond High. Yeah, that was before your time, probably. Nineteen sixty-eight. I think it was somewhere in that time frame. You know, it's, I mean, if they would, if it would have all burned down, then they, they'd have a reasonably new school there, right? <laughs> so why don't we just stay away from that? Who do we have now? Stephen Searing and I. We're going to talk a little bit. Uh, they're trying to highlight some of the faith-based education around here in the Calumet region, and with us now is I'm Lisa Smith. And you do what at St. Paul's? I'm a school parent. I have three kids at St. Paul's. And how? what grades? I have a kindergartner, a third grader, and a fifth grader. K-3-5. Yep. Boys or girls? Yes. Okay. And your name? Debbie Schmidt. I a- teach kindergarten at St. Paul's. And how's that going? <gasps> Wonderful. Really? Well, 27 little ones. 27 little ones mm-hmm. in one classroom? split between two classrooms in the morning and some of them go home at, for half day kindergarten and the rest day and I have those in the afternoon so is full day kindergarten I mean I, I don't follow this debate I know that people have talked about it and so forth do you prefer they stay all day or do you want to send them home I think it depends on the child and the family uh, setup if the parents are one of the parents is home all day then parents are the first teacher. So it would be very nice for the child to go half day and be half day with their parent. Uh, But that's not the reality for many families today. So with our full day kindergarten, we can give them the best of both worlds. Do they get tired by the end of the day at that age? We have a little rest time, and, and I'm kind of the lone ranger on that, but we have rest time in the afternoon. What do you mean the lone ranger on Most that? full-day kindergartens don't have rest time in the afternoon. But we have 30 minutes of relaxing music, look at some magazines, look at some little kid books, and just lay down on the floor and relax. And some of the children fall asleep, and I have to shake them to wake them up after an hour or after an hour and a half. So, And if they're sleeping, they need the sleep, I let them sleep. Just let them keep sleeping? For a little while, yeah. It, it helps them out. That means they were up late the night before. They got up at 5.30 so they could go to before school care. Could be all kinds of reasons. Maybe they're coming down with a cold. So that little extra time doesn't hurt them to have a little have a little rest. You know, when does that go away? You know, when does that go away that need to have a nap like that you know what i mean well i'm 60 and i could have one it'd be just fine with me i was just gonna say the same thing it doesn't matter to me i can take a nap anytime jimmy you know and i'm with you on that i work out you know i'm gonna work for myself i think my entire career and the i guess the one advantage people say what's the advantage they go there is no advantage you're always working you're always on but I'll tell you what, in the afternoon I can take a nap when I feel like it. I don't think that's ever gone away. Well, aren't there countries that have their yes. proclaimed siesta time, and it's probably not hurting anybody. It doesn't have to be a long time. Just a little short time, what, what do they call that, a power nap? Just a little short time regenerates you, and then especially when we start school in August, it's hot. The kids come in from recess, and they're frazzled. They're hot. They're, they're whooped. They want to have a little bit of... Rest and they lay down on the on the carpet? We have either they bring a little blanket from home or a beach towel and a favorite pillow. 
and we provide they don't have to sleep provide good books good music and it's classical music so they'll hear something I heard that on TV I heard that on the on the meat commercial I heard that on the Frito commercial they don't realize it's classical music that's on TV somebody turned it into money so so you play classical music for them yeah Tchaikovsky and, and, and you're wondering why they're falling asleep <laughs> could you fall asleep if you were playing kiss no 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 you're right <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't fall asleep with that. Yeah, no, but, so you know, I guess the part that 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 I wonder about is, you know, when you get older, you, you can't. If you just lay on the ground with a beach towel, were here, I mean, it would look really weird. But as a kindergartner, you could do that. I'm like wondering, at what age does that change where you can't do that anymore? A lot of people feel like it shouldn't be in kindergarten, and as the year goes along, we will have less and less of that time. But for right now, it's good for us. So some people disagree with it even at the kindergarten le level. Sure, sure. Really? Well, I don't. I think it's a good thing. As a matter of fact, I wish it was available all the way through till you know, Joe from Highland, um, where you could just lay down. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys. Most of the time at about 1.30 in the afternoon, it doesn't matter where I'm at. You know what I mean? If you're in a park and the sun's out, it doesn't look so odd to lay on the ground and fall asleep, okay? Mm -hmm. But let's say you're over at uh, uh, a friend's house, or you're in a business, or you're get you're in line in Burger King, right? <laughs> and you say, you know what? I just need ten minutes. I'm just gonna lay on the ground here. It's not as nearly you call as the accepted. Cops on you. Yeah, call the cops <laughs> on you. Homelessness is a huge problem. <laughs> no, I got a home. I'm just kind of tired. And I, uh, all right, I forgot your name again. Debbie. Debbie, Debbie Schmidt. Debbie Schmidt and. I, did, I always write it down, but it's getting late in the day where I like need a nap here. And uh, so Debbie Schmidt and Lisa Lisa Smith, correct? Yep. And you have three kids. I is do. one of them a kindergartner? Yes. Boy or girl? Boy. Boy, does he take a nap in uh, Ms. Schmidt's class? He's a half-day kindergartner. When he gets home, does he take a nap? I actually do make him lay down sometime, and I use an excuse. Uh, well, if you were at school right now, Mrs. Schmidt would be having you <laughs> take a nap and lay down. So, because I do think he he does need one sometime. You know, I got uh, a nephew, two nephews. One's uh, I think he's in first grade now, and they couldn't get him to take a nap after the age of two. Now the other one can't make it through the day without a nap, and uh, I'm glad you're doing that because I've never heard of that in the public schools now. Nobody does that, right? Probably not. Probably not. But you can do that at a faith-based institution like St. Paul's, correct? Now, why are you sending your kids there, Lisa? Uh, well, I want my kids to have a Christian education. Why? Uh, as a Christian parent, we want um, Christianity and our faith and, and God to be woven into every part of our kids' lives and into our lives as a family. And School's like a full-time job for kids. You know, they're there all day, every day, just like people go to work every day. And that's a big part of their lives. So we're really happy that while they're at school all day, you know, those five days a week, that, you know, they're going to get their their faith nurtured alongside of them getting that great, uh, that great education that St. Paul's gives us. What about uh, interacting with the faculty and the staff and basically the whole community. Do you think you could get that at a public school on the same level? Um, I, I have a hard time answering that just because I've also gone to a Lutheran school all my life okay. as well, and my husband as well. So we're, we're avid Lutheran school supporters. All right, well, then, the reason I say that is I've gone to both uh, public and private, and I've had my kids in both public and private. And I got to see if there's one glaring difference is the ability to, say, walk into a principal's office and, and kind of it's like a different relationship. It's not like it's a bad relationship in a public school, but they're public employees. And it's kind of that relationship. You go into the into your into your private school and, you know, I'm part of this thing. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. that, I think that I don't know if anybody else. Under, do you understand what I'm talking about, Stephen? Yeah. You can't just nod and say yes. You're supposed to say more <laughs> than just that. I tell little kids when they come in here, now we're going to go on the air for ask your question. You can't just say yes or no. you got to <laughs> say something else. So No, you, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, the principal, the, the faculty, 
it's more of a family uh, a feeling than a, a, a again it's a school a learning experience but it's more of a family uh, group feeling in my opinion than you would get in a public school